thank you everyone for logging in and joining today's webinar. Uh, this is uh, concerning a sample introduction accessory for ICP, AS, and ICPMS, the Teledyne CTEC ASX, ASX Express Plus. And uh, we want to talk about increasing laboratory efficiency, saving time and money uh, with this device as a front end accessory for your ICP. Um, the first slide I want to, to show is just a short description of really the heart of the product. And uh, those are the, the two uh, main pieces, a six port injection valve, which is combined with a high speed inert vacuum pump. Uh, that's for the very rapid loading and the introduction of discrete sample volumes through a fixed volume sample loop to the host ICPAS or ICPMS. Now a summary of all of the main components, including the six port valve and the valve pump module, include first of course the valve pump module itself, the electronics module which controls operation of the valve pump module, a power supply to power the electronics of the electronics module, an auto sampler which could be a CTEC type or another type and a Windows-based software to configure and coordinate the system. So this is a summary of all of the main components. And next I'll show you some examples of the setup of the system with various ICP, AES, and ICPMS instruments so you get an idea of the overall size and scope of the system. So here is just a front picture of the two main components, and this is not, of course, the auto sampler, but the electronics module on the left and the valve pump module on the right. And to give you a quick idea of the uh, overall size of the system, the Express uh, Plus electronics module is about 25 centimeters tall, or about 10 inches. The valve pump module is about half that, about 12 to 13 centimeters in height or about five inches. And then if we take a look at that in comparison to a typical auto sampler and to an ICP AES, there you see an earlier version of the electronics module next to a CTAC ASX520 auto sampler, a common type used in the marketplace, and a thermo ICAP 6500 ICP emission system. So that gives you some idea of the scale of just the electronics module. Okay. Here's another uh, picture showing it next to an ICPMS instrument, in this case an Agilent 7700. In the middle of the screen toward the um, spray chamber on the left-hand side, you might be able to see the valve pump module. We'll see a few more pictures coming which show a close-up of that. But again, you see the electronics module is just a very small device that easily sets on a bench top. And here it is again, uh, this time next to a spectral Arcos ICP, again um, a, uh, an auto sampler, a 520 model uh, on the bench top next to the electronics module and to the peristaltic pump. Okay. This next picture shows more detail. In this case, we took off the front door of the thermal ICAP 6500, and we placed the valve pump module in the sample introduction area of the ICP. So there you see really the main components of the system. You have an auto sampler, the electronics module, and then the valve pump module placed close to the host ICP's uh, nebulizer and spray chamber. Um, the uh, auto sampler in this case is the current CTAC offering, uh, the ASX 560. You'll see some resemblance with the 520, but again, this is a, an example of the new model auto sampler. Okay. So here is a close-up uh, showing much more detail of the valve pump module. And I put some call-outs in this picture uh, showing the valve pump module in very close proximity to the host ICP's nebulizer and spray chamber. 
So in the blue text, you see, of course, the valve pump module placed very close to the nebulizer spray chamber for the shortest possible sample path to the nebulizer. On the right, there's another callout with a green arrow, which shows an internal standard T. Um, you see the blue, yellow, and red fittings going into the T. Uh, that'll be in the sample outline between the valve and the nebulizer to add an internal standard. Um, on the bottom of the valve pump module box, you'll see a, a pair of small tan-colored barb fittings, and those are to the uh, fast vacuum pump, and we'll look at that in more detail. Uh, that box there contains, of course, really the, the heart of the system, the six-port valve, and the fast vacuum pump are all in that small box. So the next few slides will just sort of give an overview of the flow path and a comparison to the standard setup. This first slide shows the conventional sample introduction for ICP, AES, or MS, uh, connecting to an auto sampler and using the host peristaltic pump to move a sample liquid all the way around through peristaltic pump tubing and to the nebulizer and spray chamber. If desired, of course, you can tee an internal standard by using one of the other channels on the host peristaltic pump. But notice overall the long path that the sample will have from the auto sampler to the nebulizer going through the sample probe and including contact with peristaltic pump tubing before you reach the host nebulizer. The next slide shows the very distinct differences when you use an accessory such as the ASS Express Plus, where now the valve pump module is in between the host auto sampler and the ICP nebulizer. In this case, and if you look at the text on the bottom, the sample is very rapidly loaded by a vacuum pump into a fixed volume sample loop, and these volumes can range from as low as just under one mil up to five mils. The rapidity of the loading is very fast, depending, of course, upon the uh, volume of the sample loop. Uh, maximum might be about five seconds in practice with maybe a two or three mil loop about two to three seconds. So that loading takes place very rapidly. At the same time, however, the peristaltic pump is continuously at a steady rate uh, pumping in a clean carrier liquid, typically something like 1 or 2% nitric acid, and that's continually pumped toward the full injection valve and the nebulizer. Now, one important detail is that you see there is a T that's put in between the peristaltic pump and the valve, and that T simply pulls in air from the laboratory atmosphere. Those air pockets are really important because the air pockets are added to shorten the sample washout time, and we'll talk about that a little bit in some later slides. But the key point from this slide is instead of pumping sample all the way around through peristaltic pump tubing, we're rapidly loading it to a fixed volume sample loop using this very fast inert vacuum pump. Now on the next slide, uh, we show what happens then when the valve switches from the load mode to the inject mode when I can uh, then start the sample analysis. So now the carrier liquid, which is in red, is pushing the sample, which is in the green color, from the fixed volume sample loop into the nebulizer. So the sample is then going in as sort of a discrete slug of sample uh, into the nebulizer, and of course the amount of time you have to measure depends upon the uh, volume of the sample you have and how fast you are pumping. But behind it, of course, is coming clean carrier liquid with segments that are separated by these air pockets. And again, the air pockets are coming in from this T that we have spliced in line in the carrier liquid. And again, as you did see in the earlier photo I showed, you can put in an additional T in between the valve and the host nebulizer where you can then put an online internal standard. And uh, that liquid flow is shown in light blue. 
of course, then that precludes having to manually add internal standards to your samples before analysis. So this next slide is just sort of a general comparison of what is going on with the ASX Express. The aim is to try to shorten the times before the overall sample analysis, the amount of time needed to get the sample into the nebulizer and the amount of time needed to wash the sample out before you proceed to the next sample. Uh, for the most part, the actual analysis time, meaning the data quality that you require, is typically going to remain the same. So the number of replicates, the integration time, that typically will remain the same, although it can change depending upon the data quality you need. It's the time spent at the front getting the sample in and stabilized, and the time after the analysis washing the sample out to an appropriate baseline, that is what's changing. Okay. So this is a very interesting slide which shows the washout uh, profile of a 10 part per billion tuning solution with ICPMS. We've configured this with our uh, switching valve, uh, a relatively small volume of sample of about one mil, and we're pumping at 300 microliters per minute. In this case, we do not have any air pockets or air segments in the carrier liquid. The carrier liquid is coming in as a slug, and you're seeing a very long and long sloping washout as we're pushing the sample through the loop. But in this case, we didn't have any air segments going in. In the next slide, we show the washout profile of the same tuning solution using the same volume sample loop and at the same speed. But in this case, we do have the air pockets going into the carrier solution. So what is happening here? The air pockets, which of course are segmenting a series of uh, uh, liquid pockets of the, of the carrier liquid, uh, are actually then preventing diffusion of the actual analytical sample back into the carrier liquid. So the air pockets, of course, are then sort of acting as a buffer. And when that happens, we have this much more rapid and sharp drop-off in analyt signal. And this is a key point in getting the very best washout times uh, with the ASX Express Plus. Okay. So this next slide uh, shows a little more quantitatively what's happening. Um, here you see the configuration, the standard nebulizer, simply following it uh, with the carrier solution and the long total washout time of 410 seconds. We did the same thing with our valve and, and the same volume loop uh, of one mil. And again, you see the very long washout time. But when we had the segmented carrier stream with air pockets, which prevents diffusion, of the analytical sample back into the carrier liquid, we see the, the very much more rapid uh, total washout time from 340 seconds in, in the case of the, uh, uh, with the valve with no air pockets down to 20 seconds, and the overall <clears throat> total analysis time uh, very much reduced. So the air pockets uh, are, are very important to use. So, <clears throat> Next slide, we'll go through and we'll go through some advantages of the AS Express Plus. Again, one of the main points is to increase sample throughput, to rapidly load the sample into these fixed volume loops and inject them very quickly into the nebulizer. So in that case, we're reducing total sample uptake time, stabilization, washout time, allowing up to 50% reduction or more in overall sample run time, reduce sample waste, lower argon and energy consumption for the ICP, mainly if we can end the analysis uh, sooner, reduce sample matrix exposure on the ICP hardware, such as torches and the ICPMS sampler and skimmer cones, eliminate sample memory effects from the PVC peristaltic pump tubing. In this case, all that is touching the peristaltic pump tubing is our clean carrier liquid, or the 1 or 2 percent nitric acid. Uh, we can certainly run now more samples in the same allotted time. And we have a relatively easy to use software interface on the host ICP or ICPMS computer. 
applications uh, that we have run with the ASS Express Plus include things like hydraulic fracturing, wastewater, US EPA methods such as 6010C, groundwater, soil, sludges, sediments with ICPAS, uh, 200.7, water and wastewater with ICP, 200.8, water, wastewater with ICPMS, wear metals and oil, clinical samples such as diluted blood and urine samples, diluted seawater samples, mining samples, and soil samples. And in some next coming up slides, <clears throat> we'll show some examples of the time savings for environmental samples, mining samples, and soil samples. Uh, one other auto sampler I did <clears throat> want to show um, is the ASX 1400. The ASX 500 series is, is of course, much more common. But the ASX 1400 <clears throat> is commonly used for oil samples. And a couple features I'd like to point out on the left side of the auto sampler include a stirring paddle to make sure the samples are well mixed, a drip cup, which uh, helps prevent drips into, uh, into samples and, uh, and cross-contamination, and independent rinse stations for both the paddle uh, and the sample probe. So this type of auto sampler is what will be recommended for oils. And of course, this can also be uh, connected with and used with the ASS Express Plus. Okay. Now, the auto samplers that can be used uh, with the ASS Express Plus include the entire range of SeaTac auto samplers. Uh, including the 260, ASX 260, the new ASX 280, ASX 500, 510, 520, the new ASX 560, the ASX 1400 and 1600s, which I've mentioned for oils, and the extended rack auto sampler or the EXR8. Uh, there are also a, a couple of other auto samplers that can be used, the Perkin Elmer AS93 Plus, and the Perkin Elmer S10 can also be used, and also the Agilent SPS3. So there are a variety of auto samplers uh, that can be used with the Express Plus. The next slide shows the relatively straightforward software screen uh, that's used with the ASS Express Plus. And on here you have the main parameters that uh, you would enter in. Of course, the most important is the loop load time, how long it takes to load the sample loop, depending upon a couple of factors, namely the volume of the loop and the viscosity of the samples. But in the software screen, I'll go ahead and I'll point out a few details. I won't go into full detail, but a few details which are helpful. You notice the cursor is then um, put on the expand button on the right side. And if you expand that out, you get some manual controls uh, over both the auto sampler uh, peristaltic pump and the uh, valve pump module. Uh, these are very useful uh, for initializing the system, checking communications, so you can turn on or off the auto sampler pump, which fills up the rinse station. Uh, you can switch the valve between load and inject manually to make sure it's in its uh, end stop positions or home positions and the vacuum pump control to make sure that's working and it's pulling samples through the loop. Uh, you can also do a manual cycle uh, after you've set your parameters uh, for things like the loop load time, the loop equilibration delay. You can click the manual cycle bar underneath and it will actually go through a whole cycle and you can check that everything is then active uh, before you would begin a sample sequence run. So a few things I would like to point out in uh, the example method screen, this would be for environmental samples such as water-based or aqueous samples. Here would be, say, for a three mil sample loop, and I pointed the green arrow to the loop load time. And 3.5 seconds with this rapid uh, uh, inert vacuum pump is all that's needed typically to load that. Now at the bottom, though, I pointed out the extra time, 11 seconds, to refill the rinse station. That's because um, you do need some extra time to make sure the rinse station is completely filled with liquid 
so that when you do go to rinse the loop, you do have enough liquid in there because the uh, peristaltic pump, uh, particularly in the case of the ASX 520, is not, not as fast as the vacuum pump. The 560 uh, peristaltic pump is now uh, quite a bit uh, quicker, so the extra time needed to refill the rinse station is not as long. But uh, these are a couple of key things to point out. Also for oils, uh, in this case, this is a smaller volume sample loop, 1.36 mils. The time is about three seconds. And one of the things I'll show when I go through some of the spare parts is the ID of the tubing for uh, the oils is actually smaller. It's one millimeter because of the lower uh, surface tension of oils compared to water. Uh, so we go with a, a uh, smaller uh, ID, but in that case, then we put a little bit longer loop load time in. Okay. Um, one slide I do want to mention, and this goes back to the overall exposure of the sample uh, to the ICP hardware. This is some work done with diluted seawater 1 to 10, uh, comparing the standard nebulizer and the ASS Express Plus. And then you see with the more discrete sampling with the Express Plus, you have much less drift over time. Uh, and this goes to coating of the ICP torch and the ICP sampling cones with salt uh, from the seawater sample. With the AS Express Plus, when you're putting in discrete sample uh, aliquots through the loop, then you minimize exposure of the uh, ICPMS hardware to the uh, salt in the seawater sample. Method comparison, uh, comparing some overall times, things like delay time, sample time, wash time, total time, they can have uh, different uh, denotations depending upon the, the software you're using in the ICP. But the key thing is the overall and the wash time, particularly with the segment and carrier flow giving you the very rapid washout. The wash time often is at zero or even uh, maybe a nominal number of, of 10 or 15 seconds. So the wash time is typically the one that's very much reduced. Again, sampling time, the time that you need to get the analytical data quality that's required, that will tend to remain the same. Uh, delay time in this case is, is reduced. It can take as long to get the sample in as an injects from the sample loop into the nebulizer. So again, savings in time on the front end before you start the analysis and time savings on the back end as you do the wash after the sample analysis. And in this case, you're saving over two minutes or 135 seconds per sample. So I mentioned uh, some examples that we have um, in different markets, such as environmental oils and in mining of some of the time savings uh, that's been achieved. And these are a number of laboratories that are running a number of different methods, 6010, 200.7, 60.20, 200.8. And you can see the very dramatic savings in time uh, when using the ASS Express versus the standard introduction setup, again, pumping sample around through peristaltic pump tubing. And uh, the time save per, per 100 samples can be quite a number of hours, anywhere from two and a half up to five and a half hours. So you can either run more samples if required or simply shut down early, saving things like uh, argon gas, saving electricity. Um, all of that helps the laboratory's bottom line. Soil market, um, in this case for the soil methods, often uh, samples are analyzed very quickly. Again, we're saving, uh, in this case, a lot on, on the front end, uh, getting the sample in much more quickly. Sometimes in this case, we don't have a really long washout time. Uh, but again, when lots of samples are involved, in this case, time saved per 1,000 samples, uh, it can add up very quickly, in this case, five and six hours. Mining market, uh, somewhat similar. Uh, again, depending upon the sample loads, which can be very high, uh, again, uh, you see very high time savings, uh, again, getting the samples in more quickly and getting the more rapid washout. 
and then finally in the oils market. And uh, again, some of these can be quite dramatic. Uh, in the oils market, again, you're going to be using largely an auto sampler like the 1400 or the 1600 uh, that's more uh, specifically designed for oils. The ASS Express itself, though, the main change will be in the type of sample loops that you use. Again, typically using the smaller ID sample loops because of the lower surface tension of the oils. There's also uh, a special probe that's used for the oils with a filter screen on that will uh, filter out any particulates or any papers that are floating around from, uh, from oil filters. So I want to go into some uh, application tips and maintenance tips and overall spare parts that over time we found uh, useful to, uh, to customers. Um, first here is the passive bubbling tea. And I mentioned the importance of the segmented stream with the air pockets for getting very rapid washout. So the passive bubbling tea, and there's the part number for it, you can see the main components and we've got a carrier liquid uptake line, which is just a piece of peak tubing. We have a piece of uh, PTFE tubing, which connects to the six-port valve. And then we have another tube, which is in black on the right side, which is the air intake. And that piece of tubing has a uh, very small hole in it to pull in air from the outside laboratory to then put the air pockets into the carrier liquid. Now, one important tip that we have found is that you can attach a small length of PVC tubing. In this case, we'll use typically 1.3 millimeter ID PVC tubing cut from some peristaltic pump tubing to put over that air intake tube. Because the diameter of the hole in that tube is very small, this helps to prevent clogging by dust particles. So that's a good tip, and uh, that's typically done on the installations that we do. The next slide actually shows it in operation, and there you see the passive bubbling tea with the peak intake uh, uptake tube put in the carrier uh, solution reservoir. Uh, there you see the, uh, um, the, the black piece of tubing with a small hole pulling in the air, and then from there, the line then connects into uh, port uh, the the port on the uh, uh, six port valve, and of course that will bring the carrier liquid in to move the loop contents out. Okay. And then doing a further close up, and again this is to emphasize the connection from port number five to the host nebulizer. You see this is set up for as shortest path as possible with the valve pump module placed very, very close to the uh, host ICP nebulizer. So you try to get that line as short as possible so the sample gets in as quickly as possible and you can keep the overall time of analysis short. Okay. Uh, another note about the um, software screen, one thing you want to make sure is that the macro time, meaning the overall times that you set in here for things like the loop load, the uh, equilibration delay, all of that, that uh, that time is less than the instrument's total analysis time. If that condition is not met, the samples will be skipped and the system will appear not to function correctly. So you want to make sure that, and you can check this by doing the manual cycle, at the timings that you have in here for the ASS, ASS Express, there are less than the timing for the overall ICP method. Okay. So a couple of other tips regarding the software screen. Certainly when you go into it for the first time, you want to uh, click on Connect to ASX Express Plus. You click on that bar and it will enable all of the functions on the software screen. If that bar is not pressed, the main functions will be grayed out. Once you press it, it will become active. Another thing to note is that the box next to enable Express, ASX Express operation, that box must be clicked, uh, 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 clicked on in order to start the Express. Okay. The next slide, and we'll just look at the next bar, if you make any changes 
to any of the parameters on the software screen, such as the loop load time, you want to click on the Save Configuration to ASX Express plus bar to save any changes in these selections and or the timing parameters. That's really important, else they will not be saved. Another tip, if you are moving between different auto samplers, so let's say you are moving between an ASX 500 series and the ASX 1400, say between aqueous samples and oils, there is a functionality in the software, and that's tools. You go down to change personality, and then you choose the personality to select the auto sampler type that you want to use, and then simply click on the bar update next to it, and then the uh, firmware will set to the correct auto sampler that you want to use. And then finally, of course, you can save these methods. You can go back up to file. And you can go to save method or save method as to actually save it um, in, in the RAM on the electronic control box. And of course, you can go back and open up that method if you want to then recall it for an analysis. So continuing then with some accessories and spares that uh, we have found useful. Uh, one is the articulating mounting system. And this can mount to the valve pump module, and this can enable the user to place the valve pump module in closer proximity to the host nebulizer and spray chamber, depending upon the ICP or ICPMS type. So this is an example where we were able to use this to place the valve pump module closer to the um, nebulizer and spray chamber of an Agilent 7700. Okay, and I'll show you another picture <clears throat> which shows a little bit more detail of the connection of this. But this is very helpful. And again, minimizing the link from port number five from the nebula uh, from sample out to the nebulizer is important to keep the uh, timings as short as possible. So the red arrows, and it's hard to see against the uh, anodized uh, aluminum on, on the front, but there are two hex screws, and then you simply insert those through the two holes in that block, and that can connect to the valve pump module. And that, of course, then enables you to maneuver and place the valve pump module as close to the host nebulizer as possible. I've also called out in the blue arrow uh, the connections to the vacuum pump. And of course, this has sort of been hidden away so far but you do see the uh, two barb connections there, um, which bring in the, uh, the sample as it exits around through the sample loop and then out to waste. Uh, another <clears throat> important spare uh, is the sample probe. Uh, the probe that we recommend is the one millimeter ID, and that will have two blue bands color code. This is a a uh, probe that has a PFA capillary and a carbon fiber support for rigidity, and of course this would then attach to the host uh, auto sampler. The <clears throat> other end, which has the fitting, uh, that does attach into port number two of the, uh, the six-port valve. Here's the internal standard addition mixing tee with its part number. Uh, this is a standard part of the completion kit of the ASS Express. Of course, if you desire to add in the internal standard online, this would be added in between the six-port valve and the host nebulizer. Now here is the actual picture of the vacuum pump. And of course, this is inside the valve pump module. But if you do open that up, this is what you would see. And an important spare part that we've added is something called the connecting plate. In case of any damage to those two barbed uh, connections uh, on the vacuum pump, uh, you can actually take that out or actually open up the vacuum pump and slide out and take out that connecting plate and replace it in case those barbed connections are damaged, either if they get damaged when you pull off tubing or damaged due to chemical exposure you do not have to replace the entire vacuum pump, just that plate. Here, of course, are the six-port valves. Of course, we have two, one for aqueous applications, 
with about 1.5 millimeter ID ports, and one for oils applications with smaller ports, which are under one millimeter. So I want to make sure that, depending upon your application, if you need a spare valve, that you acquire the correct one with the right size ports. Uh, there is also an option for an external peristaltic pump if that's needed. In case, uh, for instance, your auto sampler does not come equipped um, with a, a built-in peristaltic pump to fill up the rinse station, uh, this can be plugged in to the electronic control module of the ASS Express, and there's both a two-channel and a three-channel option. Uh, but again, this is an option. This is not standard with the ASX Express. And there is also an option of an external diaphragm pump for moving uh, oils. In this case, it would be something like kerosene or primosol uh, to the rinse station of an auto sampler like the ASX 1400 or ASX 1600. And again, this would connect on to the back of the uh, electronic control module of the ASX Express. Now, when there are a variety of sample loops with varying, varying volumes um, that are available. Uh, for the uh, aqueous applications, there are a total of 12 available from 0.7 up to 5.25 mils. I've denoted which ones are standard. A 2 mil loop and a 4 mil loop is standard with the ASM Express Plus. You can acquire other loops as needed if you need that to fine tune your method. I've also included um, a table with some approximate loop load times. Again, these are for the aqueous loops with the two millimeter ID tubing. And again, you see that the loop load time, of course, will vary. The uh, larger the sample loop volume, the longer the load time needed to completely overfill the loop. The analogous sample loops, and there are nine of them for the oils applications, ranging from just under one mil up to three mils. Um, two volumes are standard, the 1.36 mil and the 2 mil. Uh, again, if you needed to add a, a different volume loop, of course, you could acquire that via the spare part number. And the sample loop load times, again, these are going to vary. Uh, these, of course, will increase with the sample loop volume. But again, these load times overall are relatively short, uh, mainly because of the uh, very rapid uh, uh, inert vacuum pump that's used. Another maintenance tip that has come up is the battery and the electronics module. Uh, we actually have this in there to store data in SRAM memory. Um, and it then fits in that little holder in the middle of the board in the, uh, in the electronics control module. And there is the part number. Overall, we've seen this having to be replaced maybe about every four or five years, but the battery is needed in there to make sure that uh, any data is stored in the memory. Now, an important service note that has come up recently that I, I do want to go over in detail is rotor damage, uh, and this is part of the six-port valve. So again, on the left, you see the six-port valve, and underneath the two connections to the vacuum pump. If I take the six-port valve off and take off the larger piece, which is called the stator, you'll see the rotor component with three grooves cut in. And what can happen is a scratch on the rotor surface between two channels. Now, if that occurs, that is a problem because then you'll get liquid seepage between the channels, which, of course, can affect your analysis. Okay. What we have found is one major cause of this is if the uh, tubing, particularly from the auto sampler probe, is pushed through the nut and ferrule, and you can see the end of the tubing protruding past the ferrule. If I then look at the stator piece, and if you look very closely, you can see the tubing protruding through ports on the inner surface of the stator. So this could not only be the auto sample probe, uh, it could also be a sample loop. Okay? So if that tubing protrudes through the inner surface of the stator, 
once you put it back all together, if that tubing is going through the hole, it could rub across the rotor, and it'll go back to the rotor, and it could cause a scratch. And of course, then the scratch will then cause leakage of liquid uh, between the channels, and that can affect the analysis. Okay. So one thing that, that we recommend and we're now including in the ASX Express Plus uh, completion kit, and it's also available at the spare, is a uh, bulkhead fitting essentially. It does have a very small hole in it, but it is too small for the tubing to go through. So let's say you do acquire a brand new um, uh, auto sampler probe, and you want to then seat the ferrule so it's flush with the end of the tubing, you can simply screw that into the bulkhead fitting so it's finger tight. So you fix the ferrule in place so the tubing does not protrude. So when you put it into the valve, it should not go through the stator and touch the rotor. Okay. And that fitting, uh, the part number is given there, SP8336. Okay. So for more information on the AS Express Plus, again, you can go to the Teledyne SeaTac website, and the website the address is given there, or you can go directly to the link below that will take you directly to the ASX Express Plus. It'll take you to things like application notes, other downloads such as the spare parts list and an application guide. And contact information, um, there's contact information there for sales, CTAC sales at teledyne.com. Also for service, CTAC service at teledyne.com. And for direct support, uh, Jacob Harrington. Jacob Harrington is a staff chemist uh, who works out of the service department. He will the, be the person normally doing uh, the install work in North America. Or myself, Fred Smith, the product manager, and there are phone numbers and our email addresses. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to any questions.